The Stages Smart Bike, known as the SB20. Finally here in the Llama Lab, and today I get about unboxing, building it, and setting it up for my size. Now I've posted my initial thoughts of this bike from the Tour Down Under a few months ago. I'm really keen to see how it stacks up here in the Llama Lab test. Now these videos on smart bikes, I do chop up into multiple parts. There's a lot to these with the physical bike, the digital configuration and the experience of riding. So today is part one. I'll do a three part series on this. The second video coming up soon will be about the digital configuration of all the gearing and the firmwares, etc. And the final video will be all about that ride experience. I need a few hundred kilometers on this before I can give you my impressions. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's get this unboxed and set up ready to ride. Before I even get to unboxing this, I'll cover the box dimensions and the weight so you know what you'll be looking at if you're gonna pick one of these up. First of all, it is 75 kilos as it sits here, so you will need to bring a friend. This is very heavy, and we know this from the 50 pound flywheel on the spec sheet. Dimension wise, across the top here, we have about 46 inches, or around 117 centimeters. Height wise, we are looking at around 36 and a half inches, around 94 centimeters, and depth around 14 inches or 36 centimeters. So if you're going to be transporting one of these yourself, that's how much room you'll need in the car. And as I said, bring a friend. This is heavy. Okay, let's get to it. First up, we do have to sacrifice the box. That's uh, as per spec. There's no doubt about it, this is the heaviest smart bike that I have attempted to assemble myself. Uh, the rear, not much weight there. In the front, that is very difficult to move. Okay, let's get rid of this packaging. So it has shipped with that uh, handlebar tape we saw over in Adelaide and those splayed out bars. And the sprint shifters already installed. All right, let's get going. Okay, so here's the aftermath of unboxing and throwing the boxes out of screen. Uh, we have the handlebars at the other end of the bike. We'll rectify that one in a moment. But what we need to do now is put the feet on to stabilize this unit and then get about putting the handlebars on, connecting everything up, getting the pedals on. We're almost good to go. Not quite the fully assembled bike that others have been, but there's not much to this at all. So it shouldn't take too long. Thank you. 
Given we're here in the Llama Lab with the desk in front of us and the big screen, I'm going to give the tablet holder a miss for this installation. The Stages bike has what we call a bear claw. So it's a bear claw, but only the four fingers. So we have 165, 172.5, 175, and 170. It is missing 167.5, but you still got a number of options here. The power meter still has the battery tag in there, so we'll get to that in a moment, but for now, I'm going to install my Asioma pedals on this unit so we can compare the power, both sides, to the pedals, both sides. Now I'm using 172.5, so I won't need a washer. If I was on the edge, I'd probably use a washer on here. Asiomas are kind of handy because we can turn them in like this to get them most of the way. But I'll show you what's a little bit of a problem to try and snug them down. And that is typically, you get to the pedal on the inside, but that's all covered in the whole way around, except for about there. So I'm hoping I can get enough leverage to get my tool in here. And there is just enough room here to snug the pedals down from the inside. If you had external pedals over here with the external bolt or nut on the outside, that's not a problem. But for some of these pedals we use these days, you're gonna to have to go to the inside. And real estate is tight. Okay, we're on. Okay, so not quite to my size out of the box, but that's next up. I'm going to go the maximum settings and the minimum settings, and then put my bike fit as I know it onto this bike. And we'll get about going for a ride. Next up is the removal of the battery tabs on the left and right power meters. The Stages bike does have two independent power meters that link as one. Now those blue tabs aren't something you can just pull on and have the power meters come alive. You do need to take the cap off and correctly remove the battery terminal protector there that's used for shipping. So taking those off the left and right side and those power meters will come alive. Once the pedals are installed and the power meters are activated, you do need to set the crank arm length within the configuration. Now I will cover this in this video because it is so important. Due to the location of the strain gauges on the crank arm and not in a spider, the system needs to know which crank length you've chosen to correctly report power. Now onto the minimum fit sizing for the Stages Bike SB20, moving the four adjustment points to the smallest location. There is a fifth one, which you will see here. Now, first of all, I'll cover the saddle height. So 51 centimeters is the lowest saddle height from center bottom bracket to the top mid saddle. We have 165 crank length, which is minimum. And there are two reach and drop options as shown on screen because the handlebars can be put in two different locations. I've left the handlebars here in the uppermost position, but if you drop them down, you will get a little less reach and a little more drop as shown here on the screen. Now onto the maximum size of everything. So the saddle as high as it goes, as far as it goes back, handlebars up and then also forward. So that's everything set to maximum. And the maximum sizing as measured in a Llama Lab, we have 87 centimeters center bottom bracket to the top of the saddle. We have 175 mil cranks. We have 82 centimeter reach and 75 centimeter drop. Onto the process of putting my measurements on the bike here. And it is a little bit of a tricky process because the measurements on the bike don't quite relate to the measurement points that I take. So you can see I'm pulling out the measurement tape a few times here. I have my fore and aft guide. Doesn't feel quite right there. It's ballpark. A little bit more fiddling around and I think I've got that dialed in. So probably just two or three minutes and we're good to go. How does that feel? Feels good actually. Well, there we go. Couldn't have said it better myself.
A common question asked of smart bikes is the footprint size. So I'll jump over here to the Stages Bike official user guide over on stagescycling.com to cover this off because there's a few gotchas with this depending on your bike size. So the official documentation states here the bike footprint is just over 62 inches by just over 22 inches. So 1.58 meters by 56 centimeters. They also list an official buffer zone, which they call a safe zone footprint, which is enough room to swing a cat or maybe your arms and probably your legs getting on and off the bike. A closer look at some of the touch points on the bike, they ship with a stages saddle, which is very much like a specialized power saddle or a Kdex boost. Very comfortable, 148 mil with a cutout. I had no problems at all with this. A quick look at the brakes and the gear change buttons up and down and an auxiliary button there, plus the sprint shifters. And it's the same for both sides. There is enough room on the oversized bars for some TT clip-ons if you want to get into a time trial position, so I don't see any problems there. Maybe just watch those hand grips though. And the last thing we'll look at is the USB charge ports. Two of those on the front, five volts, 2.1 amps, enough to charge an iPad while in use. Okay, with the bike unboxed, built, and fit to my specifications, a few of my takeaways or observations from today. Number one, the thing is heavy. Did I mention you need to bring a friend? Number two, it's well packaged, so I had no problems at all with this being shipped across the world. Here to the Llama Lab, everything was protected nice and fine. It has the best adjustment knobs, hands down, of any smart trainer that I've had. So nice, soft grip, turn adjustable knobs. It's not gonna twist your hands off or break any of your fingers when you need to move things up and down. Uh, there's a reason for that. Stages have been making spin bikes for over 10 years now, so they do have that part of it right. Big tick there. Pedal insulation can be a little tricky, as you've seen previously in this video, depending on the pedals you're using. So just watch that and just be careful with the installation of your pedals. The build itself was pretty straightforward, but you will need to refer to the manual. There's a few tricks with the electronics and where things go. So I'll put a link below to the manual. And within that online, they also have a link to their video, which I've sped up today, my process doing it, but they have a step-by-step -step guide of how to build this bike. The one area I think that is lacking with all this is the onboarding or the fit process. There's no provision for you to enter in your current bike fit and have it tell you what the measurements are on the little dials and labels to have it set up correctly. The Watt Bike Atom and the Wahoo Kicker Bike have this absolutely nailed. The Tax Bike, not so much if you've seen my video on that. Now this is not a major criticism of the hardware because this is a soft feature. This could be added at any time to their app or to the website. Even if it was just something to get you within ballpark of a few millimeters or a few uh, adjustment points to get it dialed in, that would be much better than just saying measure it and do it yourself. One thing that I may have skipped over in all of this and somebody did ask is, yes, it does freewheel. If you've ever ridden a Stages indoor spin bike, those things are a fixed gear. They keep turning. This is a smart bike and it does freewheel like a real bike outside. There are no pedals supplied with the bike, so you will need to supply your own. And there are two other components that you can swap out, that being the saddle and the handlebars. They're both standard clamps on those. But with the saddle being almost the same as the saddle that I run all the time anyway, that's staying on the bike for now. And the handlebars, well, they're fine as well. The little splayed out drops are really handy in sprinting. I did cover that in my previous video of my impressions of this bike. You don't uh, hit your wrists or your arms because the bike isn't weaving side to side in a sprint. It's straight up and down. That little splay uh, of the bars, really handy stuff. So that's a wrap for part one, of the Stages Bike SB20 here on the GP Llama YouTube channel. Stay tuned for part two, where I'll cover the digital configuration, all the gearing and options there, and something they call Dream Drive in regards to changing gears. As always, if you've gotten this far in the video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit subscribe to be alerted of new videos uploaded. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.